Hear Bill Belichick's explanation. Excuse my English, but I'm born to do this tomorrow. Like, that's serious. I was scared to walk outside, boy, if we'd have lost this one. Oh, yeah, you don't want to be walking around Philly mm -hmm. <laughs> with a loss last mm -hmm. night and a must win. Hey, everybody, Tuesday morning after Monday Night Football. Thanks for being with us, Hannah Storm and Jay Harris, who has the highlights in right his here. hand right hey, there. Uh, Eli, tying brother Peyton in the mm -hmm. record book, but the Eagles get the final word in overtime. Giants and Eagles Monday Night Football. Carson Wentz looking to stop a three-game losing streak. Eli Manning making his first start since being benched week three. Before week three, his wife Abby and, and brother Peyton in attendance. There's, there's his wife. Smile, Eli. And Peyton's like, man, it's raining. Early second quarter, Eli, Darius Slayton slips a tackle and he's gone. To the house. Giants up 7-0. Eli is pumped. The whole Manning family is pumped. 35 seconds to go and a half. Let's do this again. Giants up 10-3. Ball on their own 45. Eli back again. Slayton again. Outruns the defense and scores another touchdown. Giants up 17-3. Eli 11 of 19. 179 yards. Two TDs in the first half. 38 passing TDs on Monday Night Football. Tying brother Peyton for sixth most all time. The Eagles dealing with injuries during the game. Wide out, Alshon Jeffrey. Oh, oh, carted off the field with a foot injury. Eagles come to the game with three active receivers. Right tackle Lane Johnson left the game with a foot injury after getting rolled up on by Carson Wentz. So uh, 6-0-4 to go on the third. Eagles down 17-3, 35. Wentz to Boston Scott. Picks up 10 yards. First down. All right, first and goal from the two. Scott takes the handoff. He's in there. Eagles now down 17 to 10. To the fourth quarter we go. Still 17-10. Eagles now fourth and one from their own 29. We're going for it. I'm gonna get this. Wentz sneak first down. Drive continues. Under four minutes to go. Wentz to JJ our single white side. Nice catch over the shoulder catch for the first down. A little later. Wentz to Zach Ertz touchdown. We are tied at 17, and this game is going to overtime. So the Eagles get the ball, the chance to win with a touchdown. Wentz flipping over to Scott, who just busts up the sideline for 25 yards. 16 touches, a buck 28, one TD. First and 10 now. Wentz faking the handoff, rolling right. Josh Perkins, another first down. So we got second to goal from the two. Wentz. From the shotgun, scanning the field, Ertz, this one's over. The game-winning touchdown, Zach Ertz, all alone in the back of the end zone. Eli Manning never got the ball in OT. Eagles win 33-17, wins 33-53, of 53, 25, and two touchdown passes. We got no choice but to keep it going. You know, we're going to use this one. That this Obviously, it was a sloppy one, but we got to win. You know, and now hopefully this just springboards us uh, for these last three and we just take one game at a time and uh, see what happens. It's a start. Uh, we still got three games, you know. Uh, it's a start. We know it's a four-game season, and then tonight was one. Um, obviously, we got a, we had a great road road test next weekend, and uh, we got to get prepared for, for another another opportunity. At the end of the day, we can't have that, you know, against the good teams. You know, that's that's how you get beat. But we do know that, um, you know, we're going to get it fixed. It's not, it's never perfect, but I do love uh, how we stuck together. There's a lot of booze, a lot of everything, a lot of yard writing headlines before we even won the game. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, it was fun, though, um, just to get that win, get back in the winning column. Eagles improved to six and seven, tied with Dallas atop the NFC East, but the Cowboys have the tiebreaker because they beat Philly in week seven. Remember, these teams will play in week 16 in Philly. A factor in the Eagles' favor, they have the fourth lowest remaining strength of schedule left in the league. Great to have NFL analyst Dan Orlovsky with us. Dan, coming off three straight losses, this is the win the Eagles needed very badly, and Carson Wentz delivered. How, how do you put his performance in perspective? Yeah, Jay, I would call this the biggest win of Carson Wentz's career. Probably the most needed win of Carson Wentz's career if the stretch that they've had and the conversation around him this football season. And it maybe wasn't even about the performance. It was about the leadership. It was about the galvanizing of the football team, the decimation of injuries that happened on this offense. 
And it was like, all right, the quarterback, we paid you all this money. And you're going to have to play a little bit different style than you want to play. It's not going to be the running around big plays that we see you make. It's going to have to be about having some professional pride, having some personal pride in how you go carry yourself, how you elevate other people. Now, credit the coaching staff. They did a great job and some of the players around him. But this was Carson Wentz's most needed performance, and he went out and, and, and gave it to his football team in a big way. All right, Eagles and Cowboys now both six and seven. So, Dan, who wins the NFC East? Yeah, I, I took the Eagles before the season. I know this may sound crazy, but I'm going to continue to take the Eagles. I think the, the performance by the quarterback last night will have so much growth uh, and impact on him and believing I can trust some of the people around me to make some plays. Amen. Stick with your guns. It's not crazy. Uh, these two play a crucial one, December 22nd, in Philadelphia. Dan Orlovsky, thank you, my friend. Ahead in 10 minutes on the Sports Center, New England being investigated for an incident in Cincinnati. What we know about a Patriots production crew filming the Bengals sideline. Anna. Shanae Ogumake in the house to talk hoops yes. on a Tuesday morning. Tough day for the Rockets, right? The NBA right. announces Monday they denied the Rockets' <laughs> protest. I don't know what their hopes were there, though. Wow. Well, that was a double overtime loss to San Antonio Spurs. And, yeah, the league said you can't replay the final seven and a half minutes. Sorry. Sorry about that challenge. Sorry about that dunk. And, uh, well, <laughs> Harden hits a three here. The refs call it off for an offensive foul. Mike D'Antoni does challenge it. They take a look at it. And, listen, it, it looks like he hits Corey Joseph in the head on the follow through. So that stands. Yeah, I know. It's been really tough for James Harden. It's been good and bad. He draws the most fouls in the league, but sometimes he does not get the call. And here, hitting the contested three, gets fouled, and Luke Walton challenges the foul. <laughs> it's going back and it's going forth. But again, James Harden, he shoots so many tough shots. He leads the league in contested makes. So these, this is par for the course. The officials will no basket, but there is a foul on the floor. Jakeme is like, what's going on with these challenges? We did not have these back in my day. I appreciate the exit. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Okay, in the fourth quarter, game tied at 113. 30 seconds left. They swing it around to Ben McLemore. Go ahead. Frank. Yeah, this is the X factor for the Rockets being able to knock down shots with James Harden on the floor. And then off the buddy healed miss, we have Bogdanovich getting the board back to healed another three and he hits it. Case buddy healed. Yeah. Just his talent is uncharted, especially when this team wins. He is the X factor. Next possession. I mean, this thing was just going back and forth down the stretch. Russell Westbrook bringing it up past healed in the contested layup. Russell Westbrook, that's the number one thing he does, puts on them jets to get to the rim. And he's telling his teammates game over or not. It wasn't <laughs> over. There was a second left. The Kings advance the ball on a timeout. Oh, my goodness. Nemeja Bielica hits the 33-footer for the win. Are you kidding me? Game winner. Here's how it sounded on the Kings broadcast. All right, and the Kings uh, Twitter having fun, too. Protest that. Oh, that's not nice, people. The Kings win by one. All right, now to the Bucks. Giannis and company, winners of 14 straight, taking on the Magic. And uh, Giannis, this is just like a... Got them moves. He does, right? <laughs> you thought Dak had the moves pregame. How about Giannis? Oh, I, I, I don't know about Dak. <laughs> <laughs> Ilya Silva knocking down the three. Listen, this is just all Giannis. Second quarter, here he is going end to end. Yeah, Giannis, what he's able to do to stretch the floor, but their knockdown shooting ability is the X factor for this team because Giannis needs the floor Based, he pushes the rock. Here he is, 13 points in the first half and in the third quarter with the Bucks up by 10 now. Chris Middleton finding Giannis knocks it down from long range. Let me tell you, Giannis is trying to get his playoff reps right now. You have to take shots to make them, and he's taking the three-point shot at a very well, a good clip right now. Yeah, a nice ball movement here. Yeah, ball movement is the key, the key for this Bucks team. If you look at what they're able to do, they get so many contributions, usually nine guys in double figures. That is so rare in the NBA. Ooh, look at Jonathan Isaac. All right, Magic within seven, but later the Bucks putting it away. Giannis strong to the hoop.
How are you supposed to guard that? I don't know. 32 <laughs> points. Is that a rhetorical question? It is. As the Bucks win their 15th straight, they are averaging an NBA best 120.5 points per game mm. this season. So, I mean, what has been the key to this offensive success? Coaches tell their players ad nauseum, pace and space. Well, mm -hmm. the Bucks have the best pace in the NBA, and they also are excellent with spacing to exploit that Giannis Antetokounmpo mismatch. Now, what I mean about spacing, this is the only team in the NBA that I see this happening. Five guys usually toes outside of three point. One, two, three, four, five, you name it. All of them are outside of the paint, so this allows Giannis to go to work and attack the rim. Four guys are able to be in the paint, they still can't stop him. This is the growth aspect of Giannis's game. Knocking down threes, he's able to get the separation to knock down that shot. Again, he will need to make that in the playoffs. He's getting his reps now, but who can guard this? No one in the league can guard that. The reason why we call Giannis Antetokounmpo the Greek freak is because he has the ball handling skills of a guard, mm -hmm. but the footwork of a post. Why not lean into that by having great spacing on the floor? And they get a bucket nearly every time. It's unbelievable. Now I'm gonna get you to lean into this really fun argument. Okay, so the Bucks, they lead the ace. 21 and 3. The Lakers are 21 and 3. We got the Midwest, you know, they're doing yeah, their thing. It down. Then we got Hollywood, all <laughs> flashy. Which team is better right now? I'm going to have to go with the Lakers just because they're already a top six team in both offensive and defensive defensive efficiency right now. And they're just scratching their surface. This is an NBA star driven league. LeBron James leading the league in assists per game at 11. And then he's also got his guy AD. We thought, you know, LeBron would average a triple double with shooting. He's doing it with the post largely because when's the last time a, uh, LeBron James played with another MVP candidate? Right. Rare, mm -hmm. if ever. So maybe the Miami Heat, heat days with Dwayne Wade, Kyrie sure. was good. He's playing with another strong player that is anchoring the defense in Anthony Davis, my defensive player of the year so far. And AD's, uh, and LeBron is having his own MVP season himself. So, I mean, what I hear you saying is Star they're going to get better, too. As the season goes on. Wow. And they also have championship experience. I don't yeah. know how many people on the Bucks have that. And they got to stay healthy. They All do. right. So much fun talking hoops with you on a Tuesday I'm glad morning. to be back, y'all. Yeah, that's Shanae Ogumake. You'll see a lot of her, though. Thanks. Still ahead, Paul George quieting the Boo Birds in his latest return to Indy. How PG-13 put the Clippers on his back without Kawhi Leonard. Plus, here Bill Belichick responded to the allegations surrounding the Patriots' 